Thank you. And in the tradition of the evening of thanking people, I'd like to thank God, country, and Yale. And in honor of our distinguished opponents, I'd like to thank the Queen. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take a moment to rebut the claim that the affirmative has made that Walmart creates economic growth. As we've already said, in addition to reducing all, so all social activity to consumerism and manipulating state and local governments to gain unfair advantages, Walmart actually impoverishes the towns that it's moved into. What Mr. Robinson and Mr. Raglan didn't tell you when they bragged about Walmart's low prices is the percentage by which incomes decline when Walmart moves into a community. I'd like to describe a little bit how Walmart does that. When Walmart moves in, it destroys jobs. It replaces those jobs, but it replaces those jobs with ones that are lower paying, part-time, have no health care, and have no or inadequate retirement benefits. Right? This harms the community by impoverishing the people who work there. When it forces local mom and pop stores and local chains to close, people are forced to work at Walmart, which means everybody's wages go down. Over time, this has a multiplying negative effect on local economies, because over time people have less and less money to support their families and to invest in the other things that their local community can provide. Right? This is robbing our towns of their wealth. Want a point of information? Sure. Are you seriously suggesting that Walmart, I'm by moving this, into a local small town community and creating an abundance of jobs and creating, adding to the tax rolls and so on, but by, on the flip side of that, by closing down a few mum and pop stores, they are thus decimating the local economic environment? I am actually suggesting uh, that the costs of lower wages are greater than the saved money of the reduced prices. And actually, the data bears this out. The specific study, study the gentleman cited in his speech was in Minneapolis. That study has been discredited because it only considered one state. A study conducted out of the University of Pennsylvania that considered the entire nation um, and did county by county, county, county wide poverty rates, excuse me, um, determined that between 1987 and 1990, 1998, in every single county that a Walmart moved into, uh, per capita income went down, uh, county wide poverty rates increased, and the GDP increased by less than in other similar uh, counties across the nation. Rachel, one more question. Yes. You're so charming. Um, how many mom and pop shops do you know that offer? health care and retirement plans to their employees, since you said that's something that Walmart undercuts, or something that Walmart takes away from these employees. Mm -hmm. um, so the quality of the health care plans and the retirement plans that are offered to employees of, of local mom and chop shop are variable. Right, absolutely, obviously very. Um, <laughs> sometimes they are non-existent. The data that we do have is about Walmart, which shows that their health care plans and their retirement plans are abysmal. Let me give you some numbers to back this up. Um, First of all, let me actually talk about wages for a second. One of the people before me said that the average Walmart wage is $10. That may be true, but that's misleading. The median Walmart, raise, Walmart wage for a sales associate is $8. That means that annually, the average wage of a person working at Walmart is $13,000. This was in 2001. For, for comparison, the poverty level for a family of three in 2001 was $14,000. That means if the sole wage earner for a family uh, was, was a Walmart sales associate, that family was living in poverty. A point of information. So if Walmart sucks so bad, why is it when they open up a local store, the average application rate is 300 to 1? In fact, it's harder to get a job at Walmart under those figures than it is to get into Yale. So uh, I, think, I think my friend Mr. O'Connor um, addressed that by saying that uh, Walmart, because of the many, many subsidies that it gets from the government, um, can easily force out the other competition and people must work there. I'd like to talk a little bit more about why working at Walmart impoverishes the people who work there and their communities. Um, so, uh, as I mentioned, it makes people poorer and therefore less able to take care of their family. What it also acts as is a drain on taxpayer money. This is because people who work at Walmart get, are paid so little that they qualify for federal low income assistance in a variety of ways. The, um, Excuse me, U.S. House Committee on Education and the Workforce estimated that for every Walmart that employs 200 people, that's about the average size of a Walmart, um, taxpayers pay over $420,000 to Walmart employees in the form of assistance. 100,000 of that approximately goes to covering emergency room care and S-chip care for children of Walmart employees. Another 225,000 of that goes to housing assistance, low-income housing assistance, for example, Section 8 housing, um, and federal tax credit to low-income families who work at Walmart. That is to say, all of us pay more because Walmart is paying their employee employees less. The low prices that you get when you shop at Walmart, it doesn't mean that the cost disappeared. It means that those costs are passed on to us, the taxpayer, are passed on to the workers, and are passed on to the towns that the workers live in. Mm -hmm.
Yeah. I'd like to actually just talk about healthcare for a moment before I run out of time. Thank you. Um, now, according to Walmart's own data, Walmart provides health insurance for fewer than 43% of its workers. This is even more horrible than Walmart's similar competitors. Uh, as of 2006, it was 43. I trust that it may have increased since then. Um, that's still doing worse than Kmart, which is at 66% as of 2006. That statistic you just cite has about as much true truth to it as Bernie Madoff saying he acted alone. I'll let the gentleman fight it out with the U.S. Committee well, on Economic finished. Education <laughs> and Workforce. I haven't, actually, I haven't actually finished. The actual statistic is not that 53%. It's actually over 90% of Walmart employees are covered by a health plan. Uh, they are covered by a health plan. They are covered by public yeah, Medicaid that they have to buy into. This is because, and the CEO of Walmart is on record saying this, they acknowledge that public health plans, that is, ones for the poor, are better than the ones that, that uh, Walmart supplies for its workers. We live in a country where it's assumed that people who are employed have health insurance through their employer. And social safety nets are only for those people who can't get health insurance through their employer. We wonder why we have a health care crisis in this country. It's because companies like Walmart can't provide, don't provide, sorry, easily can provide, but don't provide adequate health insurance to their employees. Um, Moving on just very briefly to uh, uh, retirement benefits, because the lady mentioned that she has seen Enron's corporate headquarters. Um, for Walmart, uh, they provide terrible retirement plans, and all of the money that uh, they use to pay their retirement pensions to uh, their former employees um, are invested in Walmart. Right? That is 67% of the assets that they use to play the, pay these retirement plans are invested in Walmart. That was Enron's model. And when Enron rent, uh, went under, all of those employees had no retirement plans. That worked out really well for Enron, right? Um, which is to say, when these people retire, the reason that elderly people are working as greeters is because they don't have enough money, right? They don't have enough money to retire, so they need to stay on and work. If there's a crash, huh, like the one we've recently seen, um, <laughs> then these people simply act as more of a drain on their communities and more of a drain on federal taxpayers. The final point that I'd like to get to before I conclude, sorry, I'm taking so long, um, is that Walmart, in addition to impoverishing communities uh, economically, it also drains communities of local leadership. When it forces local small businesses to close, all of the people who would be local business leaders become sales associates at Walmart. That means that when Walmart le leaves, there is no leadership to rebuild and restart their economy. Thank you. <laughs>